Hey, hi. Right, so this is Nancy at Sipping and Painting Camden. And hi. I'm gonna teach you this class. It's called Arctic Dreamer. I'm gonna be using a 16 by 20 canvas today. And um, your canvas is probably not that big, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter, make any difference. Just make sure that the brushes you use uh, seem to work well for the size of the canvas. So um, I'm gonna be using a large flat a medium flat and a small round. Okay. But you can use whatever brushes feel comfortable to you. But as we go, I'll tell you which ones I'm using. We're also gonna be using primary colors, yellow, red, blue, black, and white. And these are just primary. There's nothing special about these colors. I'm gonna be using some water in a water jar or a cup, whatever's, whatever you've got laying around. And then I'm gonna be using some napkins to clean my brushes and my beverage of choice. I'm starting with water, I might switch to wine. Um, so, all right, cheers to painting. Yay. Just so you know, I am going to tape this class. Um, I know that's like a really old fashioned word. What I mean is I'm gonna record this class and then I take out any personal comments or views so that, um, so that it's just my instruction. And then after I edit out everything that's not instruction, then I just put that on YouTube um, because those YouTube classes are free after the fact, okay? Um, so if you have, you know, uh, dogs that will bark or, you know, uh, whatever, if your house is noisy or whatever, you know, feel free to just mute. Um, otherwise, I can hear you if you ask a question. Um, and if it is noisy, I do ask you to mute. But if it's quiet, we are, we're good. So I'm, um, what I'm doing now is I just picked up a large um, flat brush and I'm just putting water on my canvas. And the reason I do that is that it's really dry here in Denver and our paints dry out quickly. And so by just applying water to your canvas, you're gonna keep your paints from drying out faster than you can move them where you wanna put them. If you were in a more humid place, you know, if we were in Miami or someplace that's a lot more humid than here, we would probably wouldn't need to do this. Awesome, so we are gonna start with our background. After you get your water on, we're gonna start with our background. And, and then we'll come in and we'll put on the snow and the snowman. Um, and, but, so we'll do the sky first. And we're gonna pick kind of the middle range color. This is. We're not gonna start with black. We're not gonna start with um, uh, white. We're gonna start with blue. That's kind of a mid-range color in there. So I'm gonna pick up blue on both sides of my brush. And I'm just gonna cover the top two thirds of my canvas with blue. Okay. And it doesn't have to be with any particular brush stroke. In fact, the messier it is, probably the better because that will go along well with that wispy sky. Now your blue might look a little bit different than the blue in the picture and mine definitely will too and that's okay. You know, um, there's about a dozen different kinds of blue, um, meaning the base uh, that they're made with, phthalo blue and cerulean blue and cobalt blue. Uh, can't remember the others. There's a lot of different kinds of blue, ultramarine blue. So whatever blue you've got, it'll work. Okay. It'll be beautiful. It might not look exactly like this one, but it will still be beautiful. I'm also gonna paint the sides of my canvas as I go. So just like that, paint the sides. I'm also gonna paint the top. And 
when I get down to the bottom, I'm going to paint the bottom too. And the reason I do that is because that's called a gallery wrap. And when you paint your um, canvases all the way around the sides, then you have the option of just hanging them on the wall that way and they look finished. You can still put them in a frame if you want, but you don't have to because it'll look finished with the sides painted as well. And that saves you a little money. And the, can't, the gallery wrap looks kind of modern too, I think. So again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Wispy is good because we're gonna be covering this up with so many other colors. But if it's a little wispy and streaky, that's even better. So I'm going to pick up a medium flat brush. You just need one that's a little smaller than the one we've been using. I have one of those. Wet first, just so the bristles don't drink up the paint. Sure. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of black paint on both sides of my bristles. Not a big scoop, and make sure it's thin, like it's it's not chunky like peanut butter. Okay. If it's chunky like peanut butter, then you should mix in a little bit of water to make it a little thinner. So just so you know, we're going to put some black on, but we may end up covering some of the black again later with a lighter blue or some purple or something. Um, but we'll just put in the black and know that it might change a little. Okay. And that's okay. So I'm going to take that black and I'm going to work from this corner uh, here. Okay. And then I'm going to just kind of put in a triangle shape here. I'm going to do the same thing up here. And I'm just trying to get rid of some of that paint off my brush by making these corners darker. You can paint around the top and sides if you want to. But I didn't pick up any more black paint. I'm just, just trying to. Yeah. Okay just trying to um, get rid of some of it from my brush. And then I'm gonna take this down and notice how I don't have a lot of paint on my brush anymore. Okay. I'm just kind of stealing it from that black corner. And I'm just brushing it on real wispy like off on this side. And what I want is I want that to be mixing with my wet blue paint a little bit. Okay. So it's just darkening up the side, but it's not pitch black here. It's, it's more of a dry brush technique because most of my black is up here in the corner. Okay. And I want that to be solid, but I want it, as it comes out and goes down, I want it to just be a little wispier and kind of fade into the blue. And I'm just doing little crisscross strokes. I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm starting in that corner where it should be pretty solid. And I'm just going to bring it up a little bit on the side. And again, I didn't pick up any more black paint since that first time. I'm just using the like the paint residue that's still on my brush. Okay. Stretching it out and just letting it blend and fade into the blue. It, what, it, what I'm doing is just darkening up this corner, darkening up this corner, so that this will really pop. Okay. And I'm, I'm not even picking up any more black paint, just, just using what's on my brush. I mean, if you need to add a little more, that's okay. But just the general idea is that we don't want solid black in here or in here. We want that to be what just kind of faded away. So 
So I keep going into that wetter part, bringing it up, bringing it out. If I go in one direction, sometimes I feel like I'm taking the paint off. Am I too dry on one side? Well, you will be taking the paint off of these dark corners for sure. Okay. And then you're, you're basically just spreading it more thinly as it comes out. But some of it's already dried, even in that short amount of time. Mm -hmm. so the corners should stay pretty dark. Unless you just had a ton of paint. <laughs> Maybe I had too much in that corner. So a good way to tell is to stand back about five feet and take a look at your painting from about five feet away. And that way you'll really know, you can compare it to my sample here and see if, if you have more than the sample. More than I want, yeah. Okay. And so if you do, there's a good way to fix that. All we have to do is let it dry. And then after it's really dry, we'll go back in and put in more blue on top of it. And you can even mix the blue with a little bit of water. But okay. I wouldn't do that now because when you pile wet paint on top of wet paint, you end up just making mud. Okay. You have to let it dry. You have to let each layer dry in between, okay? Okay. So I'm gonna let that black dry and that black dry. And I'm gonna clean my brushes really well. I like to swish my brushes like crazy, let the water do the work. Okay. And then I, all I have, if I let the water do the work, then all I have to do is tap the napkin uh, to see if the brushes are clean. Oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm not really using the napkin to clean so much as just to dry my brushes. More like blotting. clean. So the next thing I'm going to do is make sure your brushes are really, really clean, okay? okay. Because I'm going to use that medium brush again, but I'm going to use it for white. So oh, I really need to make sure all the black is out of my brush. Makes sense. And I'm going to dip my brush into water and then shake the water off or tap it off. But I do want it to have a little, I want it to feel wet to the touch without being drippy. Okay. Then I'm going to dip this medium brush into white paint. And then I'm going to, in a crisscrossy motion, like a figure eight motion, I'm going to come in and put the beginnings of my, I think this is Aurora Borealis, I think. Okay. Whatever it's called, this cosmic celestial sky, whatever it is, that's what we're putting in there. And so I put it over in the center with crisscross strokes, but then again, I'm not gonna pick up any more white at all, not okay. at all. But what I'm gonna do is on each side of that, then I'm gonna start to keep doing those crisscrosses and keep going as I run out of paint. So it's gonna become a dry brush technique because I'm gonna run out of paint on that brush. I hope that makes sense. It, it does. I still have some really wet spots in the blue and it just kind of smeared with the white, so. Actually, that is great. Okay. That's better than if you don't because then you won't have to come in and deliberately try to put light blue. We don't want it solid white. Okay. Um, we're gonna come in and put some more white in if it mixes with blue too much. But see how mine's mixing with the blue a little bit? Okay. Yes. That's what I want. And the reason I want that is it helps it look very ethereal. Oh, okay. So um, you are ahead of the game if that's happening. Not on purpose, but I'll take it. It's called a happy accident. <laughs> I like those. That's a good thing. And try to alter, vary your brush strokes so they don't look the same. All, you know, try to twist your arm back and forth and, and try to mix it up a little bit. Okay. It's supposed to look like, you know, like 
you would see steam kind of just rolling around in the sky. Oh, okay. And I didn't pick up any more paint. I'm just dry brushing it. Okay, and you're just kind of going back and forth? Just whatever is still wet and letting me move it a little bit, that's what I'm doing. But I'm not adding any water. I'm not adding any paint. I'm just messing it up. That's how you get that super ethereal kind of look. And you could do those crisscross strokes like I'm doing, or you could do circles, some, you could, you know, whatever is easier for you. That figure eight or crisscross stroke, that works pretty well for me. And if it helps to use a bigger brush to, you know, for that step, go ahead, just don't add any more paint. And I'm trying to keep out of the black because I don't want it to become gray. I want it to just be blue or white. Try to stay out of the black. By the way, if you have yellow paint out, you really don't need it, except for we need just the teeny tiniest amount for his orange nose, if you're gonna be mixing yellow with red for orange. But otherwise, we won't really need yellow. Okay. Put it on my plate as a reminder to not forget the nose. But that's <laughs> such a tiny amount. Not really. So you can see that I put on the white, but it did mix some with the blue. So I've got various shades of white to babe, to light blue in here. Okay. And that's exactly what I want. Because I can always come, I'm going to come back in and put more brilliant white after we do our purple and our red. Okay. Um, purple and pink rather. So I'm not concerned about this being bright enough yet. I can do that last. So what I'm doing is I'm picking the tiniest, taking the tiniest amount of red and then mixing it with just the tiniest amount of blue. I don't need to make a lot of this. You have the medium brush? I'm actually, you can use any size brush for this, okay. medium or large, it doesn't matter. Whatever is, feels good to you for mixing. Okay. But I'm, I'm just mixing a little red and a little purple, pardon me, a little red and a little blue to make purple. But then I want it to be lighter than that. So I'm picking up a little white and mixing that in as well. And what I'm going for is a little redder, a little pinker than lavender. Okay. I'm not quite sure what color that is, but. And if I end up with lavender, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. That looks a little more blue, so I add a little more red to it? Yes. Okay. Too much blue, not enough red. All right. You know, as long as you like the color, that's really all that matters. It was like a cloudy sky. <laughs> okay. If we, I don't know if you remember who Barney is, but if you can get a Barney purple, <laughs> that would really be pretty. It's not quite, but yeah. We're, yeah. We're more like a lot of dark lilac. Lilac. That's that's what we're going for. Lilac. That that's perfect. Yay. That is great. Great label. All right. I'm still mixing mine. Nope, that's okay. I was like, did I, oh, did I miss a step? No, I'm good. I'm just mixing mine. I haven't done anything yet. <clears throat> Whatever color we get, as long as it's in the purpley family, that's, okay. that's all that matters. And that we like it. Yes, that's important. All right. 
So I see some here. I see some here. And here it's a little redder. Okay. And here's a little more purple. So we're just going to put some little splotches of it. Now mine is a little drab. Uh, mine's a little drab. I can tap in a little bit more red on it and see if that wakes it up a bit. But whatever you come up with, as long as you like it, that's all that matters. Okay. And basically it's going on the outskirts, like not the center center of this, but just the edge. Um, outside of it. Okay. And I'm gonna tap it on with this big, I'm using a big brush, but I'm gonna tap it on and then I'm gonna come in with a smaller brush and then diffuse it like we did with the other colors. Okay. So wherever you think it looks good. But make it kind of random. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna stop there and then I'm gonna pick up another clean brush and then I'm gonna do that dry brush technique. And just going around it and letting it work its way in and mixing with the colors around it a bit. Okay. If your black is still wet, avoid getting it in the black. Mine is very dry, but yeah. Finally, dry. Nice. I'm really scratching it in there. Mine's kind of a dull color, so I'm going to mix up a little bit more with slightly more red. Mm -hmm. um, so wake mine up a bit. And then I'm going to put a patch of it right here of some that's a little more red. And then maybe a tiny bit there and a tiny bit there. But basically, we're just going for purples and pinks. Mm -hmm. And because of the kind of paints that I have, for some reason, mine are just a little duller. The original might have, and we have 500 originals in the studio, and they, the artists who painted these originals had access to about 50 different colors of paint here. We use primary so we can teach people how to mix, um, and it keeps it, our classes more simple online. Um, nice. But she might have had some fluorescent in there. That could be why hers pops a little more here, but that's okay. It's still gonna be beautiful. Still gonna be beautiful. So that one, I just mixed a little more red to pinking up some spots, but I'm not putting it all over on everything that I did that was purple. This is just another little layer with some pinky, pinky or areas. pink tone, okay. So not just straight red. Right. Okay. But really it's your painting, you know, keep that in mind. I want you to be happy. If you don't like it, then, you know, do something different than what I'm doing. But look at your painting um, and decide what you think it needs, okay? Okay. And if you overdo it, you can always come back in with some blue and scratch, scratch some blue on there. And no one will ever know. This, you kind of have to go back and forth to get the look you want. And then I like to clean my brushes in between just 
especially if you're going near the black and you pick up any black, definitely want to try to keep that out of the brighter areas. On this area where the purple is right over the black and there's nothing in between, I'm going to introduce a little more blue in mine, try to soften that a bit. Okay, so soften it It's really just what you think you need. If they're not, they're not. I'm not going to get a friend to So we, do we have two painters at your house tonight? Oh, my mother is in the background talking, sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> Me? <laughs> just wondered. So this part's just, it's, uh, that we're doing is, it's hard to walk you through step by step again. And you just kind of need to know what your painting needs and go back and forth between the blue and the red uh, and the white and, you know, try to create this. But it's that technique of, you know, you, you plop on some dots, right? Or, or some color, and then you come back and crisscross it and then dry brush it. I'm putting a little bit more white in mine here. And I just keep looking at it and comparing it to this one and say, now, what does it need? What area do I need to brighten or darken? And with what color? But put on some color and then dry brush it so it fades in. So it's real soft. Real soft and heavenly. So I know this is taking a long time. The background of this painting is most of the painting. So I'm going to keep on going. I have a little more tweaking to do. I'm seeing this isn't bright enough. So I'm going to, you know, use a little brighter pink up in here and see if I can fix my way. Um, and it just, it just depends where you're, you're needing each color. So, um, you have to kind of just be the judge on what you need and where. Okay. And so it's the same technique, popping on a little bit of color, popping it on, and then dry brushing it back and forth, back and forth to spread it in and make it pop a little. And mine might've been a little bright, that's okay. Sometimes it just takes going back and forth. If it's too bright, add, you know, put another layer of blue on it. If it's too dark, add some, a bright pink or, you know. Each sky is gonna be a little bit different and that's okay. That's what we want.
if I'm not sure at all, uh, if I like what I'm doing, I like to step back about five feet and see it from a proper viewing distance. When our noses are in our paintings, we really can see what we're doing. And so you really have to step back about five feet at least and see the way it would look on your wall. Okay. It's going to look at these kind of starry uh, celestial skies. Always look difficult and awkward, and they can be a little bit frustrating. But what really makes them is when we start to put in the stars, and then we put in the rest of our composition, and, and then everything just pops. Okay. So keep that in mind. They always have an awkward teenager stage. <laughs> I like to call it. Every time they do. And then when you think you need more white, you know, go ahead, do the same thing you did before and then dry brush it in and let it mix with whatever else is wet there. As long as we're not going into oranges or yellows or browns, these colors all work together red and blue and white. They work together really nice. They play nice together in the sands. Mm -hmm. As long as there are these in the red and blue family, we're good. If we were to be applying this much paint going back and forth with other colors, we'd just end up making mud. <laughs> I'm good. And there's no really easy, fast way to just plop it on there. It's a little bit of just using your intuition or stepping back and saying, Oh, that makes me feel good. I like that. I'd like it more of it at a tiny bit more white here or whatever. Or a little more purple there. You could try this too, in this area that's a little more white, you could try just popping on a little bit on, on a brush and then just keep tapping over it rather than scrub it out. Just keep tapping over it to get a little bit more, um, sh like it's still light and, um, and it's still kind of random, but it's a little more splotchy if you like that look. And then as it goes into the center of this white beam of celestial light, those white blotches are more prominent. Just make sure you keep them random. I tend to do like order and I have to tell myself, don't make a straight line or it'll look like a tornado. And I'm moving my brush pretty fast. It doesn't matter if you have pink in the places where the sample has pink or purple in the places where the sample has purple. No one is ever going to see the original. They're just going to see yours and they're going to think you're a genius.
I have a, uh, something I have to tell myself because I tend to be a little perfectionist about stuff, but I always have to remind myself if it's 80% good, then tomorrow when I wake up, I'm probably going to think it's 90% good. And 90% is always good enough. Um, if you go for the, if, you're, if yours is 80% good, it's time to stop because you'll never reach, a, no one ever reaches 100 we're all critical of our own work. So probably Van Gogh and Monet would probably not ever say they're at 100 either. That's my guess. So we're always gonna be slightly critical of our own work. And then when we see it from a distance or look at it when other people are looking at it or seeing it with a time lapse, you know, next week, then we can see it more realistically. So I always tell myself 80%, I need to stop. So I don't overdo it. And I'm pretty close to overdoing it now. So I'm just gonna take one more minute and then I'm gonna stop myself. Because the other thing is if you're 80% good and you go for 100, you might mess up your 80. Which I'm gonna be doing right now, actually. All right, so I'm just gonna call mine done. And I would just encourage you to do the same to, you know, be done. And because we did so much dry brush technique, this should dry really fast if it's not already. And then I'm gonna wash my brushes really well. Cause I'm gonna use a stick. I'm gonna use a medium or a large brush, doesn't matter which. And I'm just gonna use the hard stick. The, the brush handle, I'm gonna dip it in white paint mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna use it to make dots. And I'm gonna put a lot of them in this white area because this is the concentrated area of celestial stars. So I'm gonna put more of them in this area, but then I'm gonna branch out and then put a little bit all over. I just want them more concentrated in this area. I think this is the Milky Way, right? Sounds like it. Yeah. And so this would be a very concentrated, starry part where the white is. And we want to make sure we, we keep them kind of random so that it doesn't look like we're playing the dots game. Okay. So I'll put some in there first, and then I'll expand it and then put them in little clusters kind of all over. So I might put one, one, two, three together to make a little constellation. I might have some that are by themselves and I might have two together. Just kind of keep it random, okay? And if you spin your brush, you get a, just a little bit, you get a slightly better dot than just tapping. But it really doesn't matter. It shows up really nicely against the black. I think some are stars and some are snowflakes. Some are gonna be big, some are gonna be small. It's all good.
And you could put a little, you could put a lot, whatever you like. I tend to overdo stuff. That's kind of my style. But if you're more subtle, then do fewer. All right, so whenever you're ready, I'll just show you this step. And if you're ready, great. If you're not, that's okay. You decide. I'm gonna take the pointiest, smallest brush I have. Okay. A round brush. And then I'm gonna dip it in just a tiny bit of white paint, which I'm gonna use like ink. And what I wanna show you is on this sample, you can see these little stars. Oh, okay. And basically you make them by touching in the center and then flicking up, touching in the center, flicking down, touching in the center, flicking out, touching in the center, flicking out. Okay. And the reason you always start in the center and then flick out is because you leave more paint when you first touch the canvas. And then when you flick, you'll get a sharper point. Okay. And so she has a whole bunch of those. They look like little crosses or, um, plus signs. They're taller than they are wide. And then she has, she has a, one of them. I'll just show you this one on this one, this painting. She has one that starts in the center, flicks up, starts in the center, flicks down, and then flicks out. And then she even goes from the diagonals and makes it a twinkling star. So it's just like the, um, the stars are catching a little bit of light. Okay. and twinkling. Now there was, we don't put um, glitter in our kits, but I will tell you, if you have any glitter and you wanna put it on while your painting is still a little wet so that it sticks, um, you can do that. Or you can, you know, wait till later and, um, I do it when it's dry because I don't have any glitter now. Okay. Does the, paint, does the painting have to be wet? Well, if it's the powdered glitter, it has to be stuck on with something, right? Yep, you got it. They have some glitter glue at the dollar store, uh, which would work really well here actually in this okay. painting. And they just come in a little tiny bottle. And then you just brush it on a dry painting. Painting doesn't look just like this one, but I'm happy with it. I hope you're happy with yours too. They never look exactly the same twice. I mean, exactly the same, that never happens. The key is, are you happy? If you want, I'll show you one more thing. This is not in the original, but if you want to do it, you can. <laughs> As if this painting isn't busy enough. What you could do if you want is you could paint a falling star. And you would do that by starting in one of these dots uh -huh. and then just flicking, flicking up and out. Oh. Okay. But it has to, you have to flick it so that the tail is thinner. Then, uh, then where it, it comes off the dot. And it's kind of fun too. Super easy. I'm just gonna take white paint on both sides of my brush, but then I'm gonna dip a little corner <laughs> in blue. Or you can just dip a little corner in blue to start with. It's basically what I'm doing. 
Big brush is I'm just making it so it's like nine ninety percent or nine tenths white, and then just a little bit of blue. I'm gonna come on and I'm gonna make some mounds across the bottom of my painting. And make them as big or as small as you want. It just kind of neatens up that what well, you know the bottom of our sky. And then I'm gonna come in with that paint. And I like how the, the blue and the white are just doing their own thing. Blending, okay. Yeah, they're blending, but not, not in a fussy way. More realistic than fussy. Okay. And then I'm just going to pull down in mounds. So it makes mounds of snow. And I'm gonna to try to keep them nice long strokes. And then I'm going to pick up more white. I can pick up more white as it go as I go, and just make it so that these are hilly, curvy mounds of snow. And you decide on the direction, just so that there's some swooshes in it. Okay. And I'm going to make it a little more blue. Now here she has it more white in the background. Here it's a little more blue. I definitely gonna put some shadow underneath the snowman, but it doesn't really matter exactly where your white and your blue are in the painting. Okay. So long as you have white in some spots and blue in some spots and where they mix in some spots, that's all that matters. We just wanted to keep it, we wanna keep it streaky we don't want to blend it all into one shade of light blue because the blue represents the recessed parts of the snow and the white, the higher parts of the snow and where this um, light is hitting the snow. So there's all kinds of reflected light in the snow and that's why you're seeing, you know, blue. It, it's doing two things. It's reflecting the sky and it's also the blue. And it's also showing you areas that don't have as much light. So maybe re recessed areas or shaded areas. We just don't want it boring. We don't want it all white. We don't want it all straight either. Give it a little personality with, with some waves in it. And adding a little drop of water might help smooth it out. Basically, when you're trying to make a circle, it's hard to freehand a circle. It's really tough. Right. But uh, there's a cheating way to do it. <laughs> yeah. So what you can do is you can start um, my, I put a star there. I'm probably going to paint right over that star. But if you start on a point, just start on any point, pretend that star is not there. And then just, I'm using my pinky to touch the dry part of the painting, mm. getting my hand. And then I just circle out. And I do it slowly and gradually. I just circle out. Okay, start in the center. And then with every move of my brush, I can fix that circle a little bit. Okay. It's very hard to draw a circle. Well, it can be. But if you start in the center and then just circle out, it's just easier. And I'm going to make it, this is the head. Oh, sorry, I should have told you where. This is above the horizon line. Right. Um, and it's about halfway down the painting, maybe a little higher, right? It's where he is there. Right. And then a few inches from the side, but it depends on the size of your canvas. So just kind of eyeball it and in about this place on your canvas, okay? 
it doesn't have to be perfect. Every snowman, like your snowman could be sitting in a slightly different place than mine, but definitely on this side of the canvas. Okay. Because he's gonna, he or she is looking up at the stars. So then I wanna start with that dot. I wanna swirl it around until I get a head shape that's about, now on my canvas, I have a 16 by 20. So this head shape is gonna be about as big as a clementine. Oh, okay. So it depends on how big your canvas is in relation to this one. Do you know what size your canvas is? Um, it's a, I think it's a 16 by 20. Okay, so I'm doing a clementine size. Okay. You know, those little cuties. Yeah. Just, just, you know, it's bigger than a silver dollar. Not too big. And then this snowman's body is really easy after that, but well, I'll let you get the head on. And it's probably even better if it's not perfect because it's a not. snowman would not be perfect. And then the body, basically all she did was she went down from the first, the head, and then she came down in this shape, it's like a gumdrop shape from the head. Now you could make round balls if you want. It's just not how she did it. It looks like he's kind of settled. It's almost like a Hershey's kiss side with a point size, with a point being the top of the head. Okay. And then this inside is just filled in with white but it's not filled in perfectly and solid because you want it to mix with the blue underneath if it's still wet, because nothing about the snowman says perfect. Because a real snowman would have like grass marks in it and the light would be hitting off, you know, the different creases where it was rolled. And okay. so there's nothing perfect about him. And it's a little blue because it picked up paint from underneath. You can even add a little blue to it if you want uh, to make it a very pale blue instead of a white white. Okay. The emphasis is on uh, not perfect. So I just added a tiny bit of blue so that he looks like he's, you know, reflecting some of that light. Okay. And then down here, the same thing, but now this time it sticks out even more. Oops, maybe not that much. It's got a pretty big base. And then it's curved, not flat. It's like the shape of a tea kettle. Oh, okay. or a honey pot in Winnie the Pooh. Hers has a little more blue in it for definition. So I'm just picking up a tiny bit of blue on my brush and just making sure there's a little, little blue in it. And then just kind of blending that in. You could go back and forth. If you put on too much blue, add a little white back in. Whatever you think it needs. Mm -hmm. It just has some of this reflected light. And then where the bottom, the medium ball touches the large, I put a little more stripe of white, uh, sorry, of blue. Just real loose and messy. Just to show where there's an indentation where that medium ball is sitting on top of the bigger one. That makes sense. And then I don't have to do that because I'm gonna put a scarf in. So I don't have to do it to his head, but if, if I did, it would be right there too. Okay. I'm gonna let that, this dry just a bit. I'm gonna put on his nose and his um, eye. 
just so that um, when I put on a scarf, it is, won't be soaking wet. To make orange, all you do is take a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow and just mix them together and you've got orange. And then I'll paint on his nose with my tiniest little round brush, the smallest brush you have. And he's got just this long, skinny, pointy carrot nose, but it's looking up toward the sky. Okay. So I'm gonna have to steady my hand to put that on. Make it go up. And then if you mess it up, don't worry. Let it dry, put white over it, and then paint, you know, paint sky over it and do it again. That is too yellow. And you might need two coats of that color for it to show up. Or you can add a little bit of white to it. Sometimes adding a little bit of white to um, red and yellow, because they're such weak pigments, adding a little bit of red or, um, I mean, a little bit of white to uh, color like orange, red, and yellow will help it will give it more body and it will stand out more. Okay. Yellow is kind of transparent. Very pale. Uh, so is red, uh, depending on the kind, the brand of the paint you use, of course, and the kind, the color. Like crimson might be different than um, another, than magenta, for example. But anyway, you can try a tiny bit of white added to it and sometimes it just helps it show up better. White seems to be a pretty solid pigment. I used we use titanium white and it it stands up. It's got body. And then if I don't make it perfect, I can always let it dry and come back and tweak it later. I don't want to paint white over it now or I'll just have a muddy mess. So I would just recommend if there's any tweaking, just, just leave it alone and paint over it later, okay? Okay. And then the eye, I'll show you this eye up close, the one she has. You can paint any kind of eye, but she put a dot and then okay. underneath it just has a little crease. Okay. It almost looks like a comma. It does. And is it blue or black or does it matter? Um, thanks. Small brush, black paint. Black. Well, um, and the reason it's black is because it's supposed to be coal, right? Oh, that's right. But, you know, it's your snowman. You do what you want. <laughs> Might have a green button this time. And so of course it goes higher than the carrot. That makes sense because it's the nose. And if it's not round, it's even more perfect because it's a snowman. And it's supposed to be cold. And then once you get a color you like, the first step of this, well, the scarf actually, the ring around his neck actually goes on last because it covers up the ends of this, the beginnings of the knot. Okay. And so I'm actually going to pretend the neck piece is already there and I'm just gonna start at his neck and then I'm gonna flick out and down. And then you can make it a little wider at the bottom with fringe. I'm using a flat brush so that gave him a little fringe. Happy accident. And then I'm gonna overlap my brush again to get the second one. Okay, the first one went out and then the second one kind of comes across them a little bit. Yeah, it goes out, but not as much. It, it, the idea is that it's looking kind of wispy and wintry, like there's some cold wind that's kind of blowing around his scarf. I think, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> that's kind of what I thought. 
And then the scarf part is gonna go, the neck part is gonna go over it. And then it's just a curve underneath his head. And extend it out a little bit past the snowman's head. So it looks like he's bundled up. I don't know why a snowman would wanna be warm, but you know, whatever. Maybe it's sub-zero weather. It, it adds to the cuteness factor. Yeah, when it's negative 12, probably even the snowmen are cold, right? I think so. Oh, and that same color that you use for the scarf, are you using like a blue or a purple? Um, a, kind of the purple. Okay. So then before you even clean your brush, you can just come underneath the snowman and in a rocking motion like that, just rock on some shadow. Oh, okay. And then really lightly, barely touch the canvas, super light. We don't want a lot of color there. It's just a little shadow under his little snowman bum. If you wanna put the teeniest, tiniest, literally just the teeniest, tiniest white dot on the bottom of the tiniest brush you have, and then put it in his eye so lightly, it'll kind of make his eye sparkle like he's alive. Oh, okay. But if you don't like that, if you want him to look more like a regular snowman, then don't do that. But basically what that is, is um, when you wanna make something look alive, you put those little white dots in because your eyes are wet, any, like a human or a dog's eyes are wet and they mm -hmm. reflect light. So that, that's like he's looking up at the stars and the light's reflecting in his eyeball. Now, of course he really has a coal eye, but you know, he probably does, I mean, it's fantasy. So either way works. And then the last step of our painting before we sign our name, super easy. We just take white paint on a small brush, small round, and we just highlight through the middle of his scarf. It just adds a little highlight so okay. that, okay. And then we'll do the same thing through the scarf following the curve. And it, it just kind of highlights the whole thing. And if you do too much, you can always paint over it. I just did a little too much up here. Just adds a little texture and highlight to his. And if you didn't get fringe when you put that on, you can add fringe. It's just, uh, I mean, this is the, the last part of the painting and, you know, feel free to tweak it uh, all you want. Um, just, but always stand back five feet before yeah. you wash your brushes, put them away and just take a last final look. I always do that um, because sometimes I see something that I go, oh, I just want to, you know, fix that one little thing. And then remember the 80% rule that you're, we're never 100% happy with our paintings, and that's, anybody would be that way. doesn't matter how great of an artist you are, no one's ever 100%. And at some point we just say, you know what? I like it, it's good, I'm done. There's this um, artist, you know, this movie that I saw last year, it was like, it was kind of a creepy name, like Woman on Fire or something. It was a really creepy name, but it was a good movie. Um, and the, the, in it, there was a woman who's an artist was painting her portrait and uh -huh. she said to the artist, how do you know when you're done? Did you see that movie? I didn't. Um, she said, how do you know when you're done? And she said, when you stop painting. Oh, okay. When I stop painting. <laughs> so, yeah, that's about it. All right. So when you're finished with your painting, then um, just pick up your small brush 
Oops, I just decided that I'm gonna make this a little wider here. That's what happens. I start tweaking and I can't stop. All right, I'm gonna take my small brush and I'm gonna sign my painting in the bottom right-hand corner with a tiny little brush. You can use any color paint you like. It doesn't really matter. I like to just put my initials in there. But you can put your whole name or your initials. I like to keep mine small so it doesn't detract from the painting. But you do you. Your, your uh, signature is your trademark. So do whatever feels good to you. And I am done. Thank you so much for painting with me today. I hope you enjoyed painting this cute little painting.